Welcome again to another episode of Trekking with Turtle. Please like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Today we are at Picket Post Mountain, and we are going to do the Picket Post Trail Loop, which is roughly about nine miles around the mountain. So come along, and let's go get lost in the wilderness around Picket Post. So Picket Post Loop Trail is actually about 47 minutes east of actually where I live. And it's just a little bit before the town of Superior. Uh, Picket Post Loop is also part of the Arizona Trail, which basically travels all the way from Mexico, uh, all the way up to Utah, or in reverse order, whatever you decide to do. Um, I think the trail from Mexico to Utah is about 800 miles. Uh, a lot of people come out here and do this every year. Um, so we're going to be part of the Arizona Trail, but we're going to be making a detour to loop around the mountain. Right now it's about 50 degrees outside. It is March 6th uh, on 2024 on a Wednesday. This trail is a moderate uh, hike, sometimes an easy hike in certain areas, especially when you get done or when you get around the mountain, it becomes a little easier if, depending on which way you go. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm choosing to go counterclockwise just because I've done this trail before and I know exactly where everything hooks up. Uh, it is also the season right now that the rattlesnakes i believe are coming out of hibernation according to certain sources so i have a hiking pole with me you can bring a stick um it's not very warm today so i don't suspect maybe that we'll run into any i think today's high is only supposed to be 67 degrees but in the warmer days you got to make sure that you got to watch your footing because they're out and about and they're in the grassy areas and you don't want to come across one and step on it. However, just know that they're not out here to chase you. If you happen to disturb them, corner them, that's when they get a little bit defensive. And, uh, you know, they say that the rattlesnake rattle sounds like Moroccans. Um, but today I brought a hiking stick with me or a hiking pole. I don't necessarily need it. For the hike, I'm more or less bringing it along just in case any of the critters decide to uh, show up and I have an encounter with them. But the well, landscape out here is stunning. The first part of the hike, roughly about three miles. It can kind of seem kind of monotonous, like nothing's really kind of going on, but you still get some good scenery. And then once you end up on the other side of the Picket Post Mountain, you get a few more views. There come along signs like this, tell you exactly where to go. This particular way, well, is actually the loop start. You can actually go to the left or to the right. If you go to the left, it will take you clockwise. If you go to the right, it'll take you counterclockwise. So we're opting to go counterclockwise today. Another fact about this trail is that there's another, there's a lot of intersecting trails as you kind of go further in. So you just have to make sure you stay on the right one. Uh, there is a trail coming up on the left-hand side that will lead you up to the actual foothill or the mountain itself. I haven't taken that route yet, but maybe I will. Um, it's about maybe a half a mile in before you make a left. That total uh mileage wise from start to, to finish is about i think it's four miles round trip uh 
I guess there's other rock formations and other fun things to see up there if you decide to go up that route. But today we're just sticking to the loop. Also, if you're coming out, I would also recommend you plan to spend a minimum, and I mean minimum, of about three hours out here. So plan accordingly, hydration and food. Make sure you're wearing your sunscreen and all the proper gear and clothing. So as I was saying, just make sure you're well prepared when you come out here. Um, most of you don't know, one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel was anytime that I get on a trail, somehow people are drawn to me to ask for directions. Where do you go? How do you get there? What do you, you know, what, do you, what to look for? Perfect example. The guy I just ran across two minutes ago, he was a little got sidetracked. He didn't know where to go for the picket post trail. Uh, so, being out here one time before, at least I kind of had a pretty rough idea where most things were. You know, I got him back on the right trail, and, uh, yeah, that's what it's all about, you know. You don't want people to get lost, you want them to have a good time, and you want them to be prepared, because it's, uh, you know, don't want to get lost out here, you don't want to get injured, and, uh, again... It's all about enjoying it, getting away from, uh, or should I say, disconnecting from society and your electronics and your work. But another reason, that's another reason why I started the channel. I don't have much going on on my channel, but what I do have on there, hopefully it will help people in their journeys. So along the way, you'll, uh, you'll get some good views of some other mountains. Uh, across the way there, you can kind of barely see it, but uh, Tom's Thumb. Uh, I've been able to view that from this angle and also from uh, McDowell Regional Park. And hopefully someday I'll be able to find out exactly how to get there and do a little, uh, do a little tubing. Uh, We're about 2.6 miles in and start to climb a little bit, but it's not a horrible climb. It's relatively uh, easy to navigate and not too technical. Uh, eventually we'll get probably to a high point. And then it will literally start leveling out a little more. We're about eh, three quarters of a mile away from the connection to the Arizona Trail. Well, we are coming up upon three miles and a liter, or 3.3 .3 miles. 3.33 miles, excuse me, and uh, pretty much at this point, we should be getting close, or right on top of the uh, connection to the Arizona Trail. When we get there, the Arizona Trail will go to the right, and we'll just keep on trudging along the picket post trail loop there is a marker up here and there she is that keeps you on the Arizona trail So here's the intersection, here's the marker. That is the Arizona Trail. This is the Picket Post Trail Loop. 
and that is Picket Post Mountain. So, it's nice to have those markers out here so you know exactly where you're at because other parts of the trail may not be as clear. So we're going to move forward. And this next section we're coming into can sometimes be a little bit tricky, I'll tell you. The tricky part is there's a few little side trails that you might see, and some of them interconnect back to uh, the main trail. But I've been told that when you get on those trails, you primarily kind of want to make sure you stay toward the left uh, and don't veer off onto any of those other trails. Uh, but it's pretty easy to navigate. It's, it's not technical. A lot of dirt. And uh, so let's continue on. Once you get through that section where all the little trails kind of intertwine, you are, uh, you're going to come across a road. Uh, whether it be a service road or road for ATVs or um, however you're gonna think oh maybe I got sidetracked but you're actually on the right trail when you come to the road the road is a part of the loop uh, I'm gonna look at my watch right now after I pick up my pole right now I'm at 3.96 uh, miles so we're going to travel on this road I have no idea how long it is that you're going to stay on the road but uh, I'll, I'll pretty much turn the camera back on when I get to where we need to make a sharp left so you're just going to stay on this road just be aware there is sometimes traffic out here last time I was here there were ATVs on the road uh, I'm assuming the road comes from Superior due to its proximity. Uh, right now I don't hear anybody on the trail. I don't hear any motorized vehicles. Alright, so we're a half a mile down the road. And what's going to happen is you're going to come across this big monstrosity of a rock up ahead and you're going to see it, the road kind of turns to the right well when you get to that area you're literally going to take a left however there's a couple of other side trails i think that actually do connect to the other side uh but i'm just going to kind of show you a little bit of kind of where this leads but i'm going to take you the back to the road to kind of show you where the actual turn is uh but this area does cross over and it will literally lead you along that rock wall over there. Um, but I'm going to go back to the road and take you the, uh, the actual route uh, so that you're not going well, you know, this side or the other. But because when you look at the, if you download the map or if you turn on the map, however you decide to do it, It'll tell you exactly where to go. As long as you keep your map on, you can always refer to your map and it'll kind of tell you the direction you need to go in. Uh, but again, once you get down here to this area where there's water on the road, you literally are going to make stage left, uh, as I think it was Snagglepuss in the cartoon said, you're going to go stage left and uh, you're going to get back on the trail over this way and it looks like it's overgrown doesn't appear that there's a trail here but this is the actual way to go and you can either cross over or you can kind of go down this way and it will literally connect back over to the trail I see horseshoe prints and some dried mud over in this area. But don't let me lead you astray. I'm just I'm just kind of the navigator right now. 
So you're going through the dry creek bed and you're gonna come across, you're gonna get, literally get right back on the trail, but it's literally just gonna follow the creek bed for a ways. Now I will mention this next section that we're gonna go through can get a little bit gnarly to the extent of like, okay, which way to go? Because some of it seems confusing and it was definitely confusing for me when I went through uh, the first time. Uh, but you just kinda take your time and uh, watch for signs, or not signs, but watch for uh, certain landmarks of like, make sure you're going the right way, like feet prints and there's not any markers through here. Uh, so some of this you're kind of on your own. But it's not too difficult once you've been here before. Now you get here and you've got two different directions you can actually go. And I don't remember which way I took the last time. But there are pink ribbons on each side and I believe if I remember correctly but again look for the footprints here's the footprints so we're gonna stay to the left I think that other trail actually intersects somewhere along the way and heck we can always go back uh, but it winds through here and eventually just kind of takes you down into the creek bed, which if I'd have stayed on the other side, that's basically where it takes you anyway. So yes, it does pretty much take you back, but at least you know now, and now I remember, takes you back to the, to the trail again. All right, once you get through that last little short, short section, this is where it gets a little bit tricky in trying to navigate because you come along uh, this creek bed and you can come across wetness and dryness all the way through and you have a bunch of branches, rocks. It's probably the most technical part of the trail. So you have to make sure that you navigate properly. And even though I crossed, I got to cross back over, there's literally a very, very small uh, area over there that you can actually, uh, do I dare say, crawl across. Uh, but because it's wet out here and muddy, you gotta watch your footing so that you don't end up in the drink. But it's very narrow in through here. I can't imagine what it's like if there's a lot of water in through here. Probably have to get your feet wet. But it will eventually come out. It'll seem like it takes forever to get through this section, but it's just slow going. But once once you get through, it opens up a little bit more. And then it's pretty much an uh, easy stroll through the park the rest of the way. But currently we are at almost five miles. So we got about three miles to go. Uh... I'm sorry, we got about 3.8 miles to go. And again, just go slowly, watch your footing. Very tight corridors. But it's doable. Well, we got through that section, 
And uh, now, as I promised, it opens up a little bit more. The trail becomes easier to navigate. Um, we're following a, a creek bed. Now, there's areas where it's dry, areas where it's wet. Um, there's one little section down here we may have to cut into the uh, creek bed because of the thick, uh, luxurious mud, if you want to call it that. Last time I was here, there was so much mud that it looked like quicksand. Um, but we'll, uh, as soon as we get there, oh, speak of it, there it is right there. Today, it doesn't look as bad. Last week, it was, uh, you would have literally taken a mud bath. Uh, there's still some mud here, but there's, it's a little easier to navigate. Uh, no mud wrestling today. But it's pretty straightforward hiking, not straight as in a straight trail, but it's, you know, pretty much from here on out, it's, it's a, it's a stroll in the park. Uh, with maybe a couple of obstacles here and there, but for the most part, we're going to be going through the canyon. There'll be another couple of areas where we will cross uh, the dry creek bed. Uh, speaking of which, here's one right here. Uh, there is one a little bit down the way. Uh, that last time I was here, uh, in order to cross, your feet got wet. There was really no way to keep your feet dry, but at least it's not cold out here and your feet dry off pretty quickly and but pending some uh, technicality it's going to be or should be pretty easy going through here I cut away too early on this last that last clip, but there is a gate you have to go through, and it's uh, nothing much to it. Uh, you just got to make sure that you close it when you're done. Uh, but it just continues on. There's a little latch here. It's not spring loaded, but make sure that you latch it back and move on all right once you make it across that little creek bed there it does have some water there's going to be an intersection up here it's not well marked other than the fact it says telegraph cyn i'm not sure what that means but there's an intersection here you can actually go right which I'm not sure where that goes, but you want to continue on left. Uh, as of right now, we probably have maybe around three miles to go. But again, it's pretty much a walk in the park. Enjoy the scenery, stay hydrated, and keep moving on. So I missed a trail sign uh, to mention to you, but there were too many people around that I didn't want to interrupt them. Uh, but the, you'll pass along the trail sign, and if I remember correctly, it will tell you that to the parking lot or to the end of the loop where Picket Post Loop starts, it's about 2.7 miles. Um, the other trail that leads to the right goes towards Another parking lot, which I'm not familiar with, maybe Apache Tears or not sure. Um, I only heard people talking about it. It will, um, well, and it also goes to the toward the town of Superior. Um, 
again, I don't know the name of that. I think it's the Lost Trail. I think it might, might be called. Uh, but right now I'm sitting on the picket post loop. Uh, I got about two point. Uh, let's see. My watch is updating right now. I, uh, I got a little ways to go. Not too far. But you know, at this point, it's pretty much a walk in the park. A couple of water crossings here. They're pretty easy to navigate. Um, just got to watch your footing. Stay away from the mud. Try to avoid the water. But we'll, uh, well, we've got a few more crossings to do. And one thing I've noticed on this side, there are these big rock structures that are uh, kind of rectangular uh, because they're formed by a some fencing that they're literally right next to where the creek bed is, which makes you wonder if that's a marking for the creek crossing. But it's not everywhere. It's only on this side, only on the uh, the north side that I've noticed it. Uh, if we come across one, I'll try to point it out. But, I mean, they're practically all along this trail in some of the bigger areas. With the exception of things like this, there's not really one here. Uh, at least that I remember. But you can see water coming down through here. Somebody's maintained the trail pretty well. Looks like they did some mitigation through here. Uh, but just stay the course. All right, so we've come two miles since the last sign. Now we're coming to a fork in the road, or in the trail, perhaps. Uh, it's going to give you two options once you get here. You're practically done. You just basically have less than a mile to go to get at the parking lot. However, it's giving you two options here. If you want to complete the exact loop, uh, you want to head to the left and go through that gate up there. If you go that direction, as it shows on here, it is 0.8 miles to that uh, to the loop, and then you have to go another less than a quarter mile to get to the parking lot. However, if you continue on this trail here, which I plan on doing today because I've done the loop entirely, it's only 0.6, but it takes you exactly to the uh, exactly to the parking lot. So I am going to uh, not complete the exact loop today because I did it last week. But again, go up through that way, it'll take you right to where the loop, and then you have to casually kind of ponder back in, uh, wander, not ponder, wander back into the uh, parking lot. Here is just a direct point uh, to the parking lot. Um, so I'm gonna go this way today, but again, you'll, you'll eventually, back to, eventually get back to the parking lot either way. So we are on the last little bit. Probably have a third of a mile to go, if not, if, if that much. And uh, we're just back. We're on this final stretch of trail. It's going to take us back over to the parking lot, which we are almost there. So just wanted to uh, let you know I appreciate you watching the video and. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed 
uh, the journey that I took, and I hopeful I hope it's helpful for you in the future if you decide decide to come out and pursue this trail. Uh, there's so much more land to explore out here. Uh, but the nice part about it is you can pretty much go outside and, you know, hike pretty much every day and not really have to worry too much about the weather. So, thanks for coming along on this journey. Uh, again, this is Trekking with Turtle. And, uh... I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Enjoy the rest of your day. And get outside. Disconnect. Enjoy nature. Nature was intended to enjoy. See you on the next adventure.